Hey, hey, Mailbag 34-ish and Teardown. And this is take two because I left my address sitting out there in the wide open and didn't even realize it until I had finished editing. So let's try this again. Okay, I have several Geiger counters here and I decided to buy the cheapest one I could find on AliExpress to see how good it is. And since this is take two, I already know the answer to that. It's a piece of garbage. Um, this one here, the GQ GMC 500 Plus, costs about 108 ish dollars. Uh, this is a X1-B. Uh, it costs about $42. And it's not too bad on the low end. It can't get near as high as this one. And this one here cost 13 odd dollars, but when you include shipping in, it works out to be $23.57. So since this is take two, I've already charged this. And charging cable. And some instructions in both English and Chinese. Not that it's going to make much difference with this thing. So, let's start it off by comparing against a few things. Okay, this is um, supposed to be uh, uranium glass. And as you can see, the numbers, if it's changing, it's within its normal bounce. So, let's try this one. There's obviously an uptick there. Background was around 0.1-ish. Now it's up to 0.23 micro sievets uh, per hour. And this one here, we started off at around 14. I think the sensor's at this point. Very little response, but there is some response, not a lot. So, that one there, oh, I actually got this uh, from uh, Czech Republic. So let's go to something a tiny bit spicier, the thorium. Uh, you can see these ones are actually, this one's actually already seeing it a bit. Uh, this is um, a, a lantern uh, mantle, so it's got some thorium in it. It's an old one, and it's reading, well, what it was before, roughly, uh, 0.18 to 0.22. So this thing is not working. Now, there's no question on this one. Oops. Let's turn it. And sorry for the shadows. But 0.35 uh, micro sievets uh, per hour and more. This one here. Give it a bit of time. It is going up. It's over 0.31 now. So these two work. This is garbage. Now I'm going to bring in my stronger source. I don't even need to let those things go back down to the uh, background. This source is from McFar. They made scintillometers. You can see this one's already going, hey, hey, getting warm and spicy. And this thing is doing absolutely nothing. So, garbage. And it rattles. It doesn't click, but it does rattle. 
Now this one here. It's indicating it's a bit spicier. Up to 42 uh, micro sievets uh, per hour. And this one here, you can see it was already climbing up, uh, just being that close. This one does click, but it's very quiet. And it's up to over 7. So, my sources are good. Let me just get this source out of here. So basically this is a piece of garbage. So it's time to tear it down now. I just want to clean up the bench first though. Okay. Am I going to be able to get into this thing? Since I don't feel like cutting up my hands, I'm going to do this off camera. Okay, heard a crack. I actually took uh, getting a screwdriver in there to pop it. And there's the nice loose battery. Interestingly, this looks like it probably is something that should work. Uh, it's got the tube. And from what I saw on Wikipedia, that tube looks like the right type. Um, battery, processor, bunch of circuitry, beyond me right now. Uh, but the first thing I'm going to do, though, is remove the battery. Since these tubes can operate around 300 volts, then I'm going to short it all out. And we can take a close-up look. So, just many, many seconds. There's one lead. There's a second lead. So, with the battery off, let's see, oh, there we go. Uh, the tube looks the same type as I've seen on the Wikipedia, so it's got a tube. It's got a chip right here, which probably is a microprocessor. I'm going to take a moment, get a close-up picture of it, and I'll put it up on one side. And then when I found this, find the specs, I'll put it up on the other side. So just a... Stay in focus. There. So yes, it's an MC51F003A4A0Y. And it is a microprocessor, and there's the specs for it. So all the parts seem to be here. Um, I think I just got a dud by the looks of it, because why would they go to this much effort if they're just making a crap product? Now, there does seem to be some bad soldering in there, but this would take a different video to uh, actually figure out the whole circuitry. And because it's got a microprocessor, it uh, can only do so much. But what I'll do is, uh, maybe in a part two, I'll test uh, the tube. And I believe all you need to do is supply around 300 volts uh, DC. Then um, put it through, I think it was, I saw on the internet, a 10 meg resistor to one end. Uh, and got to figure out which end is uh, anode and cathode. And then on the other side, you drop it down to a lower resistor. 
and then when you bring some radio radioactive material near it, uh, you get a pulse. So that's it for this one. Have a good day. And I'll try to be putting these out every uh, Wednesday now. Oh, and here's the flip side of it. Have a good day.